<laughs> Hello everybody, it's Grand Final NBL Overtime. It's come a little early, not the Grand Final Series, possibly this show. Hello and welcome, I'm Cameron Luke. We've got two teams left standing, we've got an MVP back on his way to the NBA. We've had Kerry Homicide Williams had one of the strangest four days in any broadcaster's history. We've got a new coach at Illawarra. We've got plenty to get into. And of course, you can get involved any time you like. Hashtag NBL Overtime, hashtag NBL 19, hashtag C Incredible, as I welcome you, Corey Homicide, Kerry Williams, my man. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic. It's a beautiful day. It's Tuesday. I'm back on the set with you guys. Grand Finals is among us, and we're here. I, I honestly say this, there are people who fit more into a day than other people fit into a lifetime, and that's how your last four days have been. <laughs> we'll get to all that very shortly. Liam Santa Maria, welcome to you, my man. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, as you say, grand final, and this is what a great matchup. Mm -hmm. um, fair to say the two best teams, these teams have been owning the championship the last three years and they're going to battle it out. And the best thing about it is, and in a perfect sports world, and traditionally it does happen like this as well, you've got your two best teams playing their best basketball of the year. Perth, since Kerry called them out about three months ago, have been outstanding and have beaten all the top teams or at least been in games against them. And Melbourne United were up and down for a little while, but their two wins against Sydney, which will go over, surely were outstanding. But the news of the day, and some it might have taken us at a bit of a surprise, but Andrew Bogut and the reported... More than one, multiple NBA teams that are interested in his services heading towards the NBA playoffs. It now seems likely he'll head back to the Golden State Warriors. It's tweets galore. ESPN went with it almost first. And from there, it has been an interesting narrative over the last 24 hours as the defensive player of the year, the most valuable player of the year. And the face of the league this year looks headed back to play a part in one of these, uh, in fact, probably the championship favourite. Yeah, well, it's great news, isn't it? It's, it's great for Bogey. It's working out well for him. And it's just sensational news for the NBL. We talk about Brian Bowen and him getting drafted, Mitch Creek, these kind of guys, what kind of look that is for the NBL. But for, for Bogey to come in, play well, and, um, and then get over there and, you know, with a chance to play for a contender throughout the last month and a half of the season is sensational. And Steve Kerr confirmed that they had been they're in talks the clearance is kind of um in the process and there's a good chance we're going to see bogeyman out on the floor could not fit any part of what they need and a rim protector off the bench demarcus cousins has, has played fairly solidly in particular offensively and and he'll take a bulk of those minutes in the middle but when it comes to rim protection kevin durant's their main guy and to fit andrew bogey in who fits so nicely as a veteran into a team and a system that he knows oh so well can only be good before i get to you brant boone Long, Majuk Majuk, two unnamed centres and a couple of rookies on the development list. They're all centres. At some point this year, you've said a better than Andrew Bogan. Today I'm listening to podcasts, my favourite podcast in the US, all six of them, and you're bobbing up talking how great it is and how Andrew Bogan's been. Here's my you're point. Swung. Here's my point. <laughs> Trash talking aside, banter aside. Yes. Okay? Regular season. Mm -hmm. Here's his numbers. 11.6, 11.8. Three and a half assists, pretty much three blocks a game. Mm -hmm. The man has played all games, showed durability. He's in shape. He's reliable. He took a team from the cellar to the penthouse. They turned into an automatic, overnight, a championship contending team. Now, when you look at it from that standpoint, the man has proven over a full season he's in shape, and he did not get injured. He had to play hard every night in this league. Why is that? It ain't a cupcake league, right? So he got pushed every night. K 
okay? Some games, okay, cool, he didn't dominate. But he didn't have to dominate offensively. He's not an offensive player that dominates. Defensively, his presence was felt. And because of that, he's leaving the league. He's le he left the NBA last year. He's going back to the NBA better than how he left it. You got to respect that. Mm -hmm. hey, 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 I'm just happy you're on board. Liam mm -hmm. and I raised him as the MVP in November, mm -hmm. and you didn't want to borrow it. So I like the fact you're finally on board. But facts are facts. Is he he is fa so he is the best big man in the NBA. I think we finally get <laughs> I that mean, it, straight. I mean, what a <laughs> story. We have. What? There's no more argument. <laughs> yes, thank you. There's no more thank argument. You. All I was saying is certain matchups, he did not have the advantage. So you're, you're telling me the Milwaukee Bucks should go get Josh Burke? Did I say that? No, I'm, I'm asking you. <laughs> no. <laughs> what I'm saying is... Matchups, yeah. there's certain ones he didn't <laughs> yes. favor. However, when you're overall looking at an individual season, the presence that he had, it went unmatched. And you have, and I did hear you speak a lot today on, on different rate interviews, you did make a really good point. And, and yourself, Liam, as well, the Brian Bowen situation and, of course, Terrence Ferguson a couple of years ago and the mm. continual discussion around Mitch Creek. In fact, Nathan Sobe is now an international over in France playing well. It continues to give credence to the NBL. And this exact yeah. thing, for that exact reason you said... Low confidence, body, not exactly certain how he's going to stand up week in, week in, out. The very fact is he's now gone back, just gives. And while the NBA are well and truly aware of the NBA, it just continues to boost in so many yeah. people's eyes. Well, I mean, the other thing is just the reputation of the league. And, and the reputation of the league exists now. That's part of why Bogus being called back over. He comes over as the MVP, the defensive player, you're all those things. But if the league didn't have that reputation from playing those NBL, NBA games the last few years, from all the talent that's been playing here... Then they'd say, well, if, you know, of course, that's a that's a cupcake league down there. But they don't. They <laughs> it say, ain't a cupcake league. Well, they don't. They say it's a man's league. No doubt. Is what it is down here. And he's come down. He's shown that he has, you know, he's durable. He's in shape. He's in form. And he can help a team win the title. You made a great point about how he, he bobs up at the Olympics as well and plays his best basketball when mm -hmm. he has confidence in himself. And this can only help the Australian boomers. I've been a firm believer the entire way through that he will be at the World Cup and the Olympics, mm -hmm. if not even as much for a veteran leadership compared to what he can do on the floor with a deep Australian boomers roster. And, and same as Matthew Dallavadova now playing minutes at Cleveland compared to sitting on the bench at Milwaukee, mm. these are the type of things that help a happy, confident basketballer play their best for their country. Absolutely. It's huge. It's, it's great for this, the, the program, no doubt about it. If he can continue to play at that high level and um, obviously, he signed the two-year deal with mm. the Kings. He announced at that press conference and said that, you know, there's no NBA out clauses. Mm -hmm. That retires me from the NBA. <laughs> of course, during the off-season, yeah. you know, See, teams come calling. There's, there's, there's no change. doubt. There's no doubt He's in my back. mind. He will be back. He's he won't back. be an NBA player come October 1. Not to say he won't be an NBA player April 1 or March 1 next year, depending on how right. the Kings year goes. But he has done this as well as he possibly can, I think, because he there's no out clause. Well, he apart from winning the title, he would have liked to have won well, the title. Oh, yeah, OK. From a, from a personal standpoint where he gave everything, as he will next year, for mm. the Sydney Kings to mm -hmm. win a championship. Mm. Now, unfortunately, their season ended a little earlier, and now he can go, OK, Steve Kerr gave me a little tap on the shoulder, sent me a text, and now we can look at some other options. So there's no doubt in my mind, unless other people know differently, he will be back at the Sydney Kings yeah. next year Chasing that title to become elusive this year. I agree. Good news. And good, I'll tell you what, you've had a hell of a... Did you organise those interviews yourself? And I also... You know my favourite part of your, your US uh, radio talk shows? What's that? Today? Talk to me. They all ask you about your, your nickname first. Everybody, <laughs> if they... If the they yeah, yeah, forever, forever. <laughs> just, you know, it is what it is. That's fair <laughs> if, you're, yeah, if, you're yeah. nervous, if you're a nervous Arvo duo in San Francisco, you want to know who you're talking to. Yeah, and correct. a dude is homicide. You should flip the script one time. <laughs> You should flip the script one time and say, listen, mate, this is probably best. Time. I'm trying to move past that time in my life. Hey, you in San Francisco? I spent a little time in Alcatraz, but I'm now straight and narrow. All right. Good luck to Andrew Bogan, of course, was with interest, which we will, of course, with a grand final series. Hey. Unbelievable, because really, in any sport, there's a grand final series getting knock off top billing, even for at least a day which it has. But we now, Friday night, head towards RAC Arena. It'll be sold out. The Perth Wildcats, the host game one. And these two teams who split their regular season meetings to all. And a couple that weren't without controversy. Uh, first loss for Melbourne United, which was deemed to be incorrect, a charge block call on Casper Ware, and then a missed layup by Casper Ware that we rarely see. But when it's all said and done, as we look at these highlights, we're two all leading into a grand final series. Yeah. And they've all been thrilling games. You know, captivating. This obviously was the pink game where the Red Army was a sea of pink and 
over time, Chris Golding came off the bench, lit it up, got hurt late. And Bryce Cotton did what he usually does late with some big, big plays, that steal that helped them um, in overtime. But, of course, yes, that Casper Ware call that was later said to have been a wrong call. Melbourne came away from that game saying, you know what, we feel, Here we go. We feel like we won that oh. game. And there it is. You know, for me, End of open exactly open. what you just said. Mm. They knew they won that game. Casper get the next time, the next time he was at the other game, uh, the second time they played in RAC Arena, mm -hmm. he misses a layup. Mm -hmm. We all know 99.999 times out of 100, he's making that. Is they it? are going into that arena, game one. No fear. No fear. No, no fear. And my opinion, they're taking game one. This will be the game that I think Melbourne United will lean on the most. The way they defended Perth, their first game in Melbourne, the way they defended Bryce Cotton and held him to only two points in the first half. Now, this is obviously back in, in Look, Perth. Look, I think now, there's a little, that game will play on Perth's mind a little mm -hmm. bit. The way they shut down Bryce Cotton, they kept Perth to 65 points, is the missed layup, of course, that we talked about. But this game will play on Melbourne's mind a little bit as well because Cotton got loose. 27 points. They had a really hard time containing him. And obviously, as we know, he's the key to the series. I think if you look at this, at the overtime game, which was the last regular season game of the year, Perth, without Tariko Watt, who's mm -hmm. actually playing his best basketball of the year right now. Now, it took a couple of big shots. So about to see Chris Golding through here that sent the game to overtime. But I think Perth and the way they played it out, they played loose because they didn't have anything to lose once they realised they weren't going to lose by 32 points. Mm. They'll take a fair bit of out of that. You, you talk about Melbourne not having a great deal of worry of going to Perth. I don't think, based on this, Perth will have a great deal of concern no. coming to Melbourne as well. And I think that makes for the best series. Here's my thing. United's going to win the grand, the grand final. I think... You know, I love First about, of all, you know what I love about this is you always, we have to give predictions individually to our producer guy, and he makes up this beautiful <laughs> special graphic to which we'll show you later, oh. later no, no, with the no, poll. No, don't and stop the man. The man's on a roll. <laughs> let, him, let him do his thing. Yeah, right. Let me tell you why I got to do this, because <laughs> Go ahead. somehow through Twitter and Facebook, I'm in a group called NBL for Life, right? Mm -hmm. I'm it's a Red Army too. group. I, I don't even know how I got in the group. <laughs> okay? One day I was just in it. I was getting a whole lot of heat from Red Army people. Because of the fact that I lost the bet, I had to wear the, the singlet. Yeah. And I put it on. I had to honor it. I, I, I wore it. And I predicted them to sweep the bullets. Mm -hmm. The Red Army actually believe I believe in them. Are you their friend? No! Oh, no. I'm not their friend. You've just got them on side. So let's just be clear. <laughs> You're going down. Make no mistake about that. Is there a broom? Is there a broom? There's no broom. Okay. I, that, that's not going to happen. However, you're still going to get haunted by that missing third import. Your legs are going to run out. Mark my words. Mark my words. Red Army. It's still on. Anyway, let's go. Liam, what's the key element of this series? Yeah, we look into this game one and two, quick back up, and then you, of course, get a fair bit of time off a full game, uh, game three on the following Friday. What, what's the key element for you? It's a, it's a little bit boring because it's defence, right? We said mid-season, you get into the NBL Grand Final and you win the championship by being an elite defensive team. Well, these are the two teams, first and second, in defensive efficiency on the season. So they're both elite defensive teams. Which team can has the more firepower offensively to overcome it? And I think that's Melbourne. For me, the key battleground is how Melbourne deals with Bryce Cotton on on-ball screens. We know if you're, if you're not on point, he will kill you He'll, like he did with Adelaide when he poured in 170 million points in 16 minutes, like he did with Brisbane, where they just ran all kinds of numbers at him and he dimed up his teammates and everyone else got wide-open looks. You need to manage it in a way where you don't let either of those things happen. And Melbourne have shown twice this season, those two games at home, and for a lot of that second game in Perth, an ability to do that with their bigs, Barlow and Boone, Ooh, showing, hard, showing hard, sending him back a couple of dribbles, the backline defenders tagging the roll man and then Boone or, or Pledger recovering down the middle. They have shown an ability to do that. Now, in Perth, they've picked up fouls doing that, which they didn't get called for in Melbourne. So how they manage to navigate their way through those situations, I think holds the key to the series. Fouls and 
offensive rebounds. Perth, Perth just absolutely smacked them on the boards in both games in Perth. Now, if it's a structure thing, it's a discipline thing, it might be somewhat motivation and desire, which traditionally isn't an issue come a big grand final series, but they're the two things. A lot of foul trouble for some of these players, in particular the bigger guys, and takes away their strategy to be able to do that. And secondly, Perth hit the boards so well in Perth, and even somewhat in Melbourne in that fourth game the last regular but, season. They just knocked them around But on both the teams do. Josh Byrne and DJ Kennedy are two of the elite yeah. offensive rebounders in the Agreed. league. Agreed. But then for whatever reason in Perth, that wasn't the case mm. because Perth were just able to hit the offensive boards and give themselves possession after possession mm. after possession. And when you mm. give extra possessions to a team like Perth, minor champions, you're probably going to end up on the wrong side of the ledger. Yeah, but to Josh Boone's defence, game one when they played in Perth in the regular season, something was wrong with his foot. That was the game Angus Brandt had like... 20, mm -hmm. what is it, like mm. 22 and 18 rebounds mm. or some craziness like that. Mm. Josh Boone was injured. I assure you, I'm sure that won't happen again. All right, hashtag NBA on Shout the out to Josh Boone. To get involved. He's, hey, playing well. He's been playing well. <laughs> really Defensively, well. he sent Bogut to Golden State. His second half of the year. <laughs> he sent Bogut home. Once into the 2019 year, and we've spoken about this a little bit, maybe it's having a bit more time, the way their schedule opened up a little bit, or the very fact he got a bit more confidence in the way they were playing, or it just happened that his form turned around. His second half of the year, and I think it was John Casey in a game with yeah. you, yeah. called John Bo uh, Josh Boone the most important player going mm. into the NBL second half of the year and fun and finals, and while I'm not 100% on board yet, there's no doubt they're a much better team when he's playing Well, he's so important, right? He does so, a few things that are really, really crucial to the way they're set up. Firstly, he's, he's the screener and the rim roller for all their middle on-ball action with Casper and Chris Golding. Pledger, obviously, when he comes in, but a lot of that is Josh Boone. Um, those triples that Casper Ware hit mm -hmm. to begin game one against Sydney. Who's setting those screens? Josh Boone. Josh Boone punch screen up near the centre line. Josh, screen, Josh Boone drag screen as he's coming down the floor and Casper gets open. And down the other end, we talked about navigating through those pick and rolls, being able to come out and then recover. Then also handling Angus Brand in the block. He's a legit low post scorer, so he is crucial to this series. Something I really like as well, Dean Vickerman spoke about this a little bit today, the very fact that they started game three, uh, the third quarter of game two against Sydney with real small ball. DJ Kennedy, because of the Dave Barlow foul trouble, DJ Kennedy went to the four mm. and Chris Golding went back into that five and really caught fire. And something Dean Vickerman, the question on him, or at least the question being asked towards him was, how is he going to get the best out of where Golding Kennedy and McCarron, McCarron keep everyone happy, get people shots, get them playing their best. And, you know, he's the two-time coach of the year. He has got them all playing their best basketball. I'm certain yeah. Chris Golding ain't exactly impressed with having him come off the bench, but for whatever reason, he's got them playing their best where he feels totally comfortable that if small ball's needed and DJ Kennedy has to go to the four, and I reckon he could guard K if he really has to, maybe not for an entire series, but at different times over the course of four quarters, he gives them the confidence of the, the combination they got. I think these players have enough experience to know that it's time to level up, mm -hmm. and that's what they've done in the series. Regardless of, you know, Jerome Randall was injured, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. That's taking nothing away from Casper Ware because the way Casper Ware looked, it didn't matter if he was injured or not. You just saw the look in his eye. He was, on, he was out there to kill. That was just what it was. I'm ending this in two. What would impress me more than anything was that they were still sharing the ball. Guess what? I'm going to start this game off right. Okay, I had 17 in the first quarter. Cool. I don't, I'm not forgetting about everybody else. Mm. Let's share the ball. I just set the tempo. Now let's go. Let's eat. Here you go, Mitch. Mitch gonna still. Mitch is gonna get his regardless, cause he's just a baller. He just knows yes. how to play. Mm. You know, DJ Kennedy's the same type yeah. of player. No, they they play gonna get. They just play off of where and yeah. And now, second half, Chris Golan just picked up right where Casper Ware let mm. off. Stop. And that was just a thing of beauty to see that backcourt. Yeah. Light it up in the manner that they did. And Bryce Cotton. Did the same thing for the, no for the Wildcats, right? His ability, you talk about him as a willing passer. It's a beautiful thing. That's why they love him over there. They love yeah. to play with him because, that, you know, they, those guys, Damien Martin, Greg Hyde, they have never played with a guy who is so unstoppable offensively. But he wants the team to succeed. He wants other guys to eat. And if he can draw all that attention his way and he can get other guys open looks, 
he's happy to set him up. Tariko White's the most important player in this series, I think. I, I think Bryce Cotton and Casper Boy, they won't cancel themselves out as such, but I think they'll both have outstanding series. Damien Martin is Damien Martin. You touch on McCarran, Golding. I think Brand has, has, has really had a great year. Kay's all NBL first team. I, I, I like... They're the minor champions of Perth Wildcats. And we can talk about these guys. Even the highs and the WAG staffs so who might not have necessarily had an amazing year. Man, they've got championships left and front and centre. So they're not going to be at all worried about the occasion. Clint Steinle's played really well second half of the year and, yeah. and will stand up. But to Rico White's last month in particular was really good. We were sitting here a lot over the time. He got a lot of grief and I put my hand up and mid I one. definitely put both he, hands up over there. Because here. he probably caught more than anyone else because he was the second important. We were all screaming for them to have a third. If he has... A huge five games, or however long this thing goes for, it goes a long way for them to win the championship. I'm not suggesting he's inconsistent, but there was a small time in this season where the fourth quarter wasn't exactly his friend. Right. He's, he's got rid of all that. His last month, six weeks, have been outstanding, which has coincided with the Wildcats playing their best basketball. So to Rico White, for me, and DJ Kennedy going head-to-head... -head, mm -hmm. I reckon that could be the matchup that decides the championship. That's definitely a huge matchup. And as you said, DJ Kennedy lifted his game, but Tariko White is definitely a big piece to that Perth Wildcats team because once he's knocking down those shots that he usually hits, that's a legitimate perimeter threat. That opens up the court for you-know-who to do what he needs to do, Bryce Cotton, you know? So he definitely plays a big part. Hey, I tell you I'm, what, I'm a, a little part, worried about this guy. Because you called for Clinton Steinle to play more minutes. He's played more minutes and Jeez. they got a minor championship. Well, yeah, but then he's ice cold right now in the semifinals. Ah, Luckily, yeah. too. They're there, though. <laughs> That's true. See what happens? I'm trying to you pump could, him up. Uh, you, too much. you could be ice cold and advance because winning forgives all <laughs> right, sins. Right. But when you ice cold and don't advance. No, yeah. Well, hey. When you ice cold and don't advance. <laughs> before we get to Jessica D. Yeah. I'm a little worried about Tariko White in this series. Hit me. I th he's a great fit for the Wildcats. He's a much, and I said this right from the very moment they signed him, he's a much better fit than JP Tokoto was last season. Tokoto was a highlight reel player. He was super fun to watch, and he was, you know, um, uh, an, an impactful defender in the way he would play the lanes and get steals and things. But he was a bit of a barroom door at times. Tariko White is sound defensively, but what he does is he knocks down triples. Mm -hmm. That was the idea of signing him, and that makes him a much better fit. It opens up the lane. Struggled from the arc a fair bit for most of the season. It was money from mid-range, yep. only 29% in mm -hmm. the regular season three-point line. In the Brisbane series, he got wide, wide open looks mm -hmm. because Brisbane threw so many bodies at Cotton that they got messed up in rotations and he got wide open and he was able to line that thing up like he was at practice. Melbourne don't give up those looks because they don't double Cotton on those actions. They show and they recover and that they tag and then they stay at home on those mm. shooters. So Tariko White's going to have to put the ball to the floor. Now he's pretty good. He gets to the mid-range and he shoots. I don't think he's going to get those wide open threes. I don't think he's going to have the kind of impact he had against Brisbane. Well, that's what they're going to try and work it out. They're going to try and get him the impact because I think he is the main... But that's a good point because he did get some really nice open looks against the Bullets. Do you have mm. anything else before we get to predictions? I see you scribbling something down. That's for later, <laughs> is it? <laughs> OK, cool. All right, of course, the easiest poll of the year was today. Hashtag NBL19 at NBL. Who is going to win the grand final series? And right now it has 58% saying the home team, or at least the home court advantage, Perth Wildcats. 42% for Melbourne United. And, of course, what we do love, and I'm assuming we're going to hear a fair bit about it right now, is that... Oh, wow. We have oh, in the Red Army. Really? And that is... Oh, the energy wow. is in sync, baby. Okay. Not only did Kerry <laughs> Williams... The Red Army's going to Not only, not only oh. did Kerry Williams tell the Red Army that he's not your friend, he's... Wow. We've all gone from Melbourne. <laughs> so, to be thing. clear, we give these tips through to the producer during the day. Yep. Without, individually. Individually, individually. Without seeing it. So, wow, how about that? Let me just say this. Fire. This is from the great stat man. Mm -hmm. 29 of the past 32 grand final games have been won by the home team. Three wins on the road in grand finals are from the past 32 games dating back to 2009. Can you tell me who they are? Nope. I reckon one would have been New Zealand against Cairns. Mm -hmm. One would have been Perth and Illawarra a couple of years ago. Okay. And if we're going back to 2009, who won the 2009 title? That was the Dragons. The Dragons? No. Which wouldn't Dragons really count, because I think they played at the same place. Dragons they? was... 
809. I can't really remember the third. I think I'd definitely, I'd definitely be able to get two. One would be New oh, Zealand beat Cairns. Cairns had home court advantage in the grand final. New final. Zealand twice. So New Zealand okay. at Perth in 2013. New Zealand at Cairns, Perth at Illawarra. Well done. There you go. Well, not well done, but I guess two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> and me like one said it. All right, let's talk about the Sydney Kings. And, uh, of course, the biggest news is that Andrew Bogut is under contract but will play his trade for the Golden State Warriors as he heads towards an NBA title. But what we do at the end of the year is check out how they look. Mm. They are, of course, coachless. The Rob Beveridge rumours continue to swirl. There was an article in the Daily Telegraph in Sydney today written by Matt Logue, I'm pretty certain, that suggested mm -hmm. Brian Gorgian might have some interest. But mm -hmm. this is how the playing lock, uh, list looks. Now, contracted is Andrew Bogut. This Kevin Lee situation is interesting because we all thought that he was under contract. Well, yeah, well, he and Brad Newley both signed three-year deals mm -hmm. at the start of the Andrew Gaze era. OK, so, so they're there all you coming go. Coincide. So essentially they've got Andrew Bogut. What do you do? Liam, I'll start with you. <laughs> got nobody. <laughs> it's just the buggy man. Man, if Andrew Bogan you know what? If Andrew Bogan coaches as well, it will be the first yeah. time. Well, <laughs> he's got a clean slate to put his team together. I mean, put their team together. That's crazy looking. That just looks crazy. Um, what do you do? So you just re-sign Kevin Lish as quickly yeah. as you possibly can, right? And um, I think you do the same with Brad Newley. Um, it'll be obviously a renegotiated situation. This is the key thing for me is whether you go back, you dive back in with Jerome Randall. And he is a superstar and a mega talent and an awesome baller. I don't think it worked with that team. And I don't think it worked with Andrew Bogut in a number of different ways. And if, you, if you're building your team around Bogut, I don't think Jerome Randall's your point guard. Can I just ask you just quickly to change what's done in the Randall situation? 1 of 15 on Sunday. Clearly hampered, OK? Clearly hampered. Yeah, so clearly. he's a guy who has played point guard all year. And, and while it might not have clicked 100%, it was integral to some winning the same amount of games as the two teams have finished one and two. Yeah. When a player is that hampered, is he and should he have been given the, the chance and the licence to play as much as he did on Sunday and take so many shots? Or is it on the coaching staff to say, well, let me throw you're this struggling, to we need to find something Because Corey else. said, well, Corey, in advance of that second game, you spoke to Bogey and spoke to Jerome on socials and you said, Jerome, if you're hurt, sit down. Mm -hmm. He came out on his Instagram and said, hey, look, I was hampered. I, I wanted to go out there and do what mm -hmm. I could for the team, but I didn't really have it. Should he have played? That's, that's, but does he deserve... My, my thing is, does he deserve the opportunity because of who he is in that team to make the decision? Or when the coaching staff saw he was so clearly hampered and the fitness staff would know, mm. should they have played someone else? Well, if I'm in that situation and I'm hurting and I know I can't give nothing... I'm gonna sit down. Can I? Can I point out? He it's actually, hot, it so is a tough one. He got some really good looks. He on got Sunday. some good looks, and he's he's a confident dude. And he goes, "Look, I might not have the lift, I might not have an explosion, but if I get those looks, I'm gonna knock them but, down." But, and and you know you what? Know? There were shots that when he took on on Sunday, I thought he will knock this down. Yeah. Torn quad or otherwise, and that's the hardest thing to do in professional basketball oh. is sometimes to get these looks. And he actually got some good looks. Yes, but it's it, when you're at that level. Yeah, true. The explosion. Yeah, and, and yeah. It, you're just not quite at 100. percent Just the rhythm is off and everything's off. Look, it's know? a little bit different when you're down 15 and you've got to throw everything out and your season's on the line. But they looked a lot better with Kyle adding them on the floor in the second half on Sunday. I mean, I agree. Like I said, Jerome Randall was hurt, you know, and. He needs to be his dynamic self to be to have the effect and the impact on the game. And when you're injured, I believe he should he should have just sat. If you're if you're Jeff Van Groningen you now getting back to the free agents, do you mm. get a coach first? You or gotta get a coach gotta first. Get a coach so first. players first, a coach first. Look, there are a couple. I mean, Kevin Lish, I think, is probably the one guy mm -hmm. you could lock back up before you get a coach. Because what coach? <laughs> seriously, true. What coach is is not going to want him on their roster? Um, but uh, you know, especially as a as a local. Apart from that, though, you got to get a coach because he's got to be have a ha hand in putting the team together. David, a couple of club options there: kick it, where Wilson and Ding Ding. Wilson continues to be. I reckon weekly someone from the AFL world says that they believe that Tom Wilson will be playing AFL next year. Now, I'm not sure. If I don't that's even just know Tom Wilson, hopeful, but I believe or... just with a cool name like that, he's going to play <laughs> AFL. He, oh, he, oh, he's going to play AFL. It, it would be a shame because he can really play. He can hoop. He's got, he always got to do, he's got to find an NBL team that isn't as deep at his position because it hurt him this year, the opportunity to play. And even when he played for the Boomers, yeah. he actually played quite well last yeah, week. He's and baller. He can play he's no ball, doubt. Yeah, 16. Mm. Kick it's an interesting one. We, we've spoken a lot yeah, see, of the year. I mean, I think, I think, I think kick it can be effective in your team if David Ware's not your starting power forward. They're just too similar. Yeah. If Jacob Wiley's your starting power forward, and Hammer was saying this right from the very start of the season, and it took me a little while 
to get on board. Not, not that Wiley's a better option that, than Ware, but that they necessarily had to have that athletic rebounding guy. But he was right, and they did. And if you have someone that's vastly different to kick it, does all the things he doesn't do, and he can provide a point of difference when he checks into the yep. game, then he works. Well, you know what else? Oh, that's right, except if, uh, if... Even though they're so similar, if we had had a good year, we wouldn't even really have to discuss it. Like, if we had came in and gave 18 and 6, even playing a similar way to which Daniel Kicker did, we wouldn't have to worry about them being so similar, I don't think. Yeah. Don't if they think... had a power forward that actually had a four-man that actually had a really good year as an import, yeah. then I think we'd be saying, yeah, they're similar... Kickett's probably not as athletic as, you know, but he's probably not going to give as many points, but we wouldn't be questioning so much. The fact that right. David Ware probably saved his career in that Perth game. Well, he did it twice. He did it earlier in the season in New Zealand. I think he was gone that weekend. <laughs> there you go. And he went out and hit a bunch of shots. They got the win. And they and wrote it well, in. Well, geez, how can you fire a guy after that? And then again in Perth. Mm -hmm. And we actually, you know, there were there was conversations. It was like, well, geez, is, is that the best thing to happen to Sydney? Him hit that shot and mm -hmm. then them lock him in for the rest of the year. As it turned out, maybe not. All right, the Brisbane Bullets, of course, eliminated by the Sydney uh, by the Perth Wildcats in a sweep over the course of the weekend. Andre Lamanis's men, who made the players for the first time as they've come back into the league, head into an off-season that has some optimism around it, but also uh, Glidden Kadi Vicona, who and oh, one, of most, talk about one of the most remarkably emotional press conferences you'll see. Of course, and Magna are all contracted a couple of the imports there, uh, all their imports with uh, Patterson in particular, their main guy. But we might just quickly start on, on Mika Vicona because couldn't play on Saturday with the, uh, the partially torn Achilles. And Andre Lamanis' press conference was amazing to watch, and that's the essence of what sport is at so many times. Mika Vicona is a warrior, mm. the most respected player in the NBL, hands down. We're not talking about talent or skill, we're talking about will, desire, hard work and effort. These are things coaches dream of their players having. You don't ever have to question that. He has your back. No one will punk you on that court. He has your back on offense. You need a screen, he got you. On defense, he got you too. It was just sad to see the fact that he went out the way he went out because uh, they definitely needed him. I can't believe he played out that game with 30% tear in his Achilles. As someone who has snapped their Achilles, it's a bit different, but wow, that's incredible toughness, which we all already knew that he well, possessed. You, you know what? Was anyone one little bit surprised that Ojala Mana said he's, he wants to go out there and play? But it, would there be anyone yeah. in the basketball world, that, or the Australian right. basketball world, surprised by that comment? And good on Andre for not letting him. Yeah. It right. falls on him to make that call. You know, because it's strange that he said, right. it was interesting, I found that he said, I wasn't willing to let him do that. Often coaches say, that's on the medical stuff. Yeah, well, you, you think about that, They make though. the decision. You think about that. He plays him, he does rupture his Achilles or tear it or whatever the injury might have been, and then it comes out that he actually did it on a Thursday night. Coach. I don't know where it goes from there now. I'm not sure if it just... Yeah. But, like, the well, perception... Well, Andre told me that it was, it was actually an easy decision. Yeah, I, I would, and judging by his emotion at the press conference, I'm not one little bit of surprise. Yeah. So what do you do with this team? Well, you, your, pri your priority re-signings for me, Matt Hodgson, and the word is that they're, re they're currently negotiating. Greg Davis reported from the Courier Mail, two-year deal, ex two-year extension. So hey, that's, that works. And a big shout-out to Hodgson who said, I'm taking the one year at Brisbane yep. and I'm going to work me, butts, me butt off and prove that I'm worth the money. Looks like he might have got it. Mm. So good on him, man. That's what you've got to do. You've got to back yourself in. That's Patterson right. and Gibson are also, for me, priority re-signings. Gibson has shown that he's just, you know... A, a great veteran presence off the bench at this point. Um, you, I think you snap up that club option on Cam Bairstow. Mm. He had a really good year. Yeah. And you hope to hell Tarangi uh, takes up the player option so you don't have to pay him more. So this, this... If he comes off that and comes into the market, then it, there'll be some teams interested. Kerry, you're probably best to actually answer this, but I reckon outside the Australian basketball environment, any like if you look at the NBA... Your player option, you're coming off where you got the most improved and the sixth man of the year. No one in their right mind is, is signing a contract. That. Is taking it. No I one. I am testing the waters. No, I'm testing it. Now, it doesn't necessarily I'm mean you want waters. to leave. It just means that, hey, you know what? I deserve the a little bit more than money. That's why you have a player option. No Because you back yourself in. And I assume mm. the money in the first year is relatively low yeah. where he's backed I mean, himself the, in. I would, would be stunned he if he took it. No, you would expect that he would. But I would be also be stunned if he wasn't in Brisbane next year. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Because they'll re-sign him. He likes that yeah. situation. He improved a lot mm -hmm. under 
Andre Lamanis. Um, he obviously, one other thing, though, is he did enjoy working with McDowell. I'm not certain whether McDowell is going to be with the Bullets next season. I don't know that for sure, but he's certainly going over and signed a multi-year deal with the Canterbury Rams during yep. the off-season and um, is a, you know, he's a potential future head coach in this league somewhere. The, the other question is the starting lineup, right? The starting lineup coming into this year was Glidden and Kadee, our Boomers, FIBA, World Qualifying, Asia Cup style starting backcourt. I think, like New Zealand, you need to say it, it didn't work and we need an import point guard. Two things to start with. We'll start with Jeremy Kendall because at one point this year you were pretty much acting as his pseudo-manager on Instagram, making sure he got a gig. <laughs> you got him a gig? <laughs> what do you think of Jeremy Kendall? Who you've seen obviously a fair bit of. I think that he should have played more minutes. He's a legit point guard. He should have played more minutes. Do you but re-sign him as an import? I don't know. Because if, he's, if, if he, he gets if he, if he's, if he gets naturalized, he can go to a bigger club. If he gets naturalized, he is a quality point guard. Yeah. If he gets naturalized, he can shoot, he can handle, he can create for himself as well as others. He plays aggressive defense. Mm. He's a legit guard. Mm. It's just the fact that sometimes when you're just accessible and available, people treat you as such. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's just what it is. So his best bet is if he can get naturalized. He'd be way more valuable. I think he'll be the Phoenix if he gets naturalized. That's probably a big if. I have no idea You've how the got immigration works. <laughs> you are you are Asian? <laughs> You've got 20 Are players. you telling me to the guy to the Phoenix? <laughs> Since you gave up the gig, I jumped in the side. Okay. Fair enough. That, all right, Jason Kadee, I want you to tell us how it played out on Saturday afternoon. You went on Instagram and you had a video and talking about Jason I'm going to back up Yeah. Okay. before Saturday. All right. So okay. just tell us how it played out. Okay. Game one. They lose by 30. Jason Kadi has a donut. They go home. Game two, they lose. They get swept. Jason Kadi has another donut. You are not a backup point guard with this team. You are a starting point guard and you are a leader of this team. You're not a rookie. You're not a second year. You're not a third. You're about like a six year player. Okay? You've been inconsistent all year. My question is. I went on there and I said, you're not a boomer. You belong playing in second division. That's what I said. Mm. Let me ask you this. All hell broke loose, and I don't know why. Okay? Not even all hell broke loose, but enough hell broke loose, and I don't know why. All year, when the Perth Wildcats lost, what did I do? I wrote them. I wrote them individually, and I wrote them as a team. Nobody said anything. I was on Bogut's ass. Nobody said anything. And they were scoring. This is a big stage, okay? When Adris De Leon, they lost five games Adelaide, mm. right? Mm. They go one and four. He averages five points a game. What happened? Come on. Cedric Jackson at one point was cream of the crop in this league. This year, how was his year? Inconsistent. Nothing. Nothing, basically. He's coming back next year? What I'm saying to you guys is this. This is not a cupcake league, okay? The level of the league has risen. The competition of the league has risen. If you can't rise with it, there's a second division. That's simple. Cedric Jackson again, Adris De Leon. These were guys that were dominating in this league, correct? At Cedric Jackson, at mm. some point, mm -hmm. back then, mm. they came back, and what happened? The league has risen. They did not rise with it. Their talent did not rise with it. That's just it. Shouldn't be no different. It, it's different because of the difference between the imports and the Australians, which is something we've spoken about, and, and Joey Wright has mentioned and put on the agenda probably early in the year. This is the way I see this play out. What about Trist? I don't, what just, happened to Trist? There's a guy named Trist. He got sacked. Why? Oh, Dan Trist from Melbourne United. He's talking about, he's talking about so I was thinking... I was thinking to Travis Strauss. No, Dan Trist. Trist. Yeah. What happened? Well... He did not perform. And what happened? Well, they still... I'm what happened? still paying him. Where well, is he? released him. He's in Spain or somewhere. He's no, in no, 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 no. What happened? They replaced him. They replaced Thank him. you very much. OK. Let, all right. I, I'll agree with you that Jason Cadiz's year was inconsistent. I'll agree that he didn't have a great, obviously, a great semi-final series and he put up two donuts when, in particular in Game 2, when they had a huge chance to win. I'll agree that the level of the competition's got better, and he has to, and he is a boomer, and he played, yes, he played actually quite well in the, 
in the in the Boomers really World well. Cup qualifier right before uh, right before Christmas. Mm -hmm. In fact, kind of got his groove back wearing the national colours he compared did. to how he started the Brisbane. But I don't disagree with the points you've made in the video and again today, but. It just seemed to me watching it that it was extremely harsh on a guy who was definitely an NBL player. Definitely an NBL player. Now, he might not be a starting point guard in this league, which Liam just flagged, and he may not be a starting point guard next year. And you know, there are, you're right, the Dan Truce one does come into play a little bit, but very rarely does that happen, in particular for a player who is in starting five compared to Dan Truce, who is towards the bottom of the Melbourne United roster. And the very fact is that when you said what you said, he was inconsistent. He's a, he had to stand up if Brisbane to have any chance of winning that series, and he didn't. No disagreeing. But to say that he has to go back to the NBL 1, where he would probably average 35 points a game, just seemed a little bit harsh with the tone. So you, you, it's harsh that I said he should go to Division 1? No, it's just that's how the video came across. No, I'm just saying, for, for you yeah. watching it, that's yeah, the only thing that was there. Yeah, right? I don't disagree. He, oh, okay. I don't think anyone can argue the fact that he didn't have a good series. I don't think... Do you think the timing of it... Well, how about this? As well. okay. Because the man had, you know, they, it was literally at what, an hour after they'd been eliminated from the season. But in. You know what? And that's heartbreaking I in agree. the playoffs. I right? dropped those same timings when I was dropping the sinking ships on Perth mid-season. I agree. Every season. I went on a crazy, how, how many games did Perth lose? A lot. Like nine out of 11. Mm. Was I not dropping videos on Perth? Did I not post fire everybody? I, did I not post <laughs> sinking ships? What did everybody do? I, laugh. You know what? I, I, everybody I, laugh. I, my point with the timing is that this is how world sport actually happens, wrongly or rightly, True. as a team gets eliminated. This yeah. is something that Australian basketballers, as the money goes up, you know, the exposure goes up, everything goes up, there's probably at different times over the last decade where players in the NBL who haven't played all that well probably have not copped as much criticism as, say, an Aussie rules player or a National Rugby League player, what it might be. And I'm not saying that's right. That's just how professional sport across the world is. And you're right, the timing does suck. Because when you did the video, it's an hour after the bullet season had been eliminated and no doubt no one would have been feeling worse about Jason Gaddy's performance than Jason Gaddy. But what I'll say too is that happens all across the world. Because if you don't say it there on the basis of them being eliminated then you'll never say it because mm -hmm. no one cares about what you say three days later about a team that no longer is participating yeah. in the semi-final he, or grand final series. Here's my message to Jason Kadi. Shoot your shot. Yeah. Shoot your shot. I mean, he got... A, he was elevated, recruited to Brisbane, elevated as, oh, you're going to be our starting point guard, made a boomer because of how he previously mm -hmm. played in the NBL, which was as a gunner as a guy who would turn games by lining it up, hit one, two, three threes in a row on consecutive possessions, bang, time out. We're up 11 because of Jason Kadee. We haven't seen that for the past seven months in the Brisbane Bullets lineup. Now, obviously, he's the point guard, the starting point guard, so he's taking on the responsibility of running the offense, moving the ball. And when Lamar Patterson came in, he became very deferring. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I can remember Brian Gorgian and a message he used to give, which was, if you're, if you're little, you cannot just be a reversal guy. I might as well have someone 6'9 out here being a reversal guy who's going to have an impact down the other end and we can throw some lobs to. You're going to be out here on the floor at that size and you, are you a stopper? You're not a stopper down the other end. What are you? You're someone who can get us going offensively. And he was hesitant. And he'd been a bit hesitant all season, had a couple of moments, but in that series was really hesitant, just didn't let the ball... Go and I think you, he's a great guy. The people like like him around the team. Cam Besto, Hodgson, Glidden, Patterson. I think those guys would get upset with with Jason Kadi if he let a few fly and tried to catch fire. I say shoot your shot. One hundred percent. What you out there for? Cam, Cam Glidden didn't have a good series, but guess what he did? Mm -hmm. Shot a shot. You know what? I'm going out guns blazing. Mm -hmm. I can respect that. Yeah, you can't have everyone doing that, but that's a team but that... That, that backcourt needed yeah. them to, to lift. You know when he and shot Patterson his shot, too? Them. You know when he shot his shot, which surprised me? When they needed to beat New Zealand that last season, and he... Well, he Glidden was, wasn't playing. No, Glidden. He had, I think, maybe 12 of the first 14 points of the game yes. to get them going. And 100%. I, I, look, I, I know the confidence comes and goes sometimes in you know five-minute periods, but I was surprised that after being so good in that... that 
it was a it was an elimination final really because if they lose they're going home. Yeah. He opens the game so well and then didn't seem to carry that over into Perth. In, well, I think he'll I think he'll be a six man next season. To mm -hmm. be honest, I mean, hey, Lamanis might just back him in. It'll be interesting to see. They have a good relationship, but I think he'll be a six man. He'll go back into that microwave type role and could be a massive factor for them moving forward. All right, from Brisbane, who are in the off-season. Illawarra have been off-season for a couple of weeks. Rob Beveridge has moved out of the coaching role and a fan favourite. I think he's done everything at the club, except sell hot dogs. <laughs> he's a guy that was a towel guy originally, played some games there, of course, has been the assistant coach. And uh, old Flynn, in like Flynn, I think, was the uh, <laughs> NBL tweet this afternoon. But mm. uh, Matt Flynn's a new head coach at the Illawarra Hawks. And I don't know him at all. Liam, I'm assuming at some point you've come across him. What can you tell us about mm. him? A long-time assistant. He's been an assistant coach at that club for a long, long time. He's Illawarra, born and bred. Mm. Played briefly with the club in the early, mid-90s. A little bit of Townsville and then has been coaching juniors and then coaching the as an assistant at Illawarra while other guys have had that job. Gordy, Cookie had a bit of a look. Rob Beveridge come in and Matt Flynn's been there the whole time. So you look around the league and you see a whole bunch of guys who were assistants who got elevated and became really good head coaches. Those guys love to see it. Dean Vickerman tweeted today, I love seeing assistant coaches get yeah, that opportunity. opportunity. So that's great, and we hope that he does really well. My question is this, who else did they speak to? Because when you're going to promote from within, you may know that is our guy, but do your, and I hate this term, it's a cliche these days, but do your de due diligence. Mm. Did you speak to Judd Flavel, who's a future head coach in the league? Did you speak to Mick Downer, who's a future head coach in the league? I hope so because, you know, Liam Flynn, these guys overseas who come in and are looking for a head coaching job, and, I hope, you know, hopefully they spoke to those guys. There's two assistant coaches involved in the grand final series, Paul Lanaro, who's obviously done it already, and Matt Nielsen continues to get thrown around for every time there seems to be a Matt job Nielsen, vacancy. 100%. So I'm not suggesting either of those two are wanting to leave their current clubs mm -hmm. or the fact that Illawarra did or did not want them or whatever, but it is always interesting when you make a decision before the season is done and having an opportunity to see what's actually all out there. All right, Liam Santa Maria, you've been watching, you always do. What did you pick up over semi final? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was serious business, right? It's the finals, it's right. serious business, but there was a little bit that took place. Here's Kick It in the warm ups, just, whoa, didn't quite have the ups <laughs> that he wanted. This is Casper Ware. This guy's wearing a yellow t shirt. Not sure if he's a Kings fan, but he's very supportive. <laughs> very, very, very supportive. Um, this is Brisbane. Look at the the lace. This is Brisbane's production crew. Lamar's trying to get warmed up. They're shooting laces in his eyes. <laughs> of course, that's look, look at the guy in the back. He's going on the playoffs for all that adjustments, oh, no. right? <laughs> <laughs> now, Lamar Patterson, speaking of distraction, the, the Brisbane fans really distracting him on this important free throw, 17 seconds to go. One bloke over there took it to a really high level. Check out that guy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot going on there. And this guy in the background, he really loves that beer. Oh! oh. <laughs> Dead! <laughs> He's happy with it too. He really loves it a lot. Oh my goodness. Hey. Oh, oh, <laughs> there it is. What a stitch up. I Guy actually, Neville. That you know was what? not on the run sheet. <laughs> Thank you to Guy. I actually had a phone call about this oh, boy. on Saturday mm -hmm. and actually forgot to pass that on. But yeah, there you go. Liam control the eyebrows. You know what that means? It means that we won't ever see the Victoria Titans press conference you did all those years Thank ago. Thank goodness. We've got some new <laughs> footage of you. All right. Now, obviously when it was right. announced that Kobe Bryant was going to, and I think he jetted into Australia today, Corey Homicide Williams sat on this panel and said, we've got to be there. And by we, he meant <laughs> myself, Liam, and himself, Kerry. Yep. And then, of course, that changed to... <laughs> In the last week, we Instagram stories from Homicide's account where every 15 minutes it was, I'm going, while well, Liam and I are sitting at the Crown Casino food court. And then he comes up yesterday with, I've got a free ticket to give away. Who wants it? Still no text message no. to Liam or I. The, the, the WhatsApp thread was, was <laughs> real bad. Yeah, it's real bad. It's crickets That's in there. When we, text, when we text, hey, Corey, any chance of a ticket? It said, Corey Homicide Williams has left the conversation. <laughs> but you did throw it out there to let a fan go and see Kobe Bryant tomorrow night at Crown Palladium and just tell us how it all played out and how you found a winner. Yeah, well, for me, you know, what I wanted to do was give it to somebody that would really appreciate this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. You know, obviously, it is, it's forget hanging out with me, you know, and talking hoops. It was really about having an opportunity to see one of the greatest basketball players ever.
Um, I wanted to get somebody that I did not know, a complete stranger. And when I threw it out there, I just wanted to see how people would respond. Mm. And that would determine who would I pick. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, I came up with three finalists. They all had to give me three videos as if they won. Mm. And that's the video that we're about to show. So they don't even know who they are. Love it. So, you know, I just wanted to just do it like that. And, you know, hopefully um, this person I feel would appreciate it more than anybody else. So this is who I picked. Wow. Hey, Homicide, thank you so much, man. This, cannot believe it. Um, I've wanted these tickets since the day they were released. Probably the only time Kobe will ever come out for this sort of thing. So for you to take time out of your busy schedule to, to give this opportunity to a complete stranger like myself, um, to spend a little bit of time talking basketball with not only an NBA legend, but a basketball legend worldwide, worldwide like yourself. Uh, I'm so grateful for this. This is just blown my mind. Um, you're an incredible human being. Thank you so much, Homicide. I'm really looking forward to seeing you, man. Thanks heaps. Wow, that is cool. So, you know, Kirby Bell, you're coming with me. <laughs> We're going to eat. We're going to have a couple of non-alcoholic drinks because I am responsible. Oh. And uh, we're going to see Kobe do, do his thing. You know, um, I'm looking forward to hear the mama mentality. I heard the book was incredible. But, you know, more importantly, just get to sit there and kick it with him while we just watch some, a great, one of the greats do his thing. So that's what it's about, man. That is awesome. Hey, Good on who, you. Who's the NBL legend you mentioned that he's going to hang out with? Gaze. I think Gaze <laughs> would be in there, you know. <laughs> Whoever said flattering. <laughs> You're an incredible right. human being. <laughs> Winner. You're in. Let's go to Kobe. All right. Hey, of course, you can get involved anytime you like. At NBL, hashtag NBL overtime. Xander.p says, should Kerry Williams' nickname change from homicide to Care Bear? <laughs> oh, oh, come on. Oh, man. The man's trying to move on. You know, just... Never. Carry my back. <laughs> Carry my back. You see, this is why. See? But I had to let it out. Because let me tell you what really happened. Why I had to let it out. Because while I'm at the NBL Awards, I walk by Bogut, and Bogut is like, hey, Corey, or is it Carrie? Ooh. Which one is it today? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I got to let it out before Bogut I does. I like it. I like mind it. Games. He's playing mind <laughs> games with you. At Benny Williams 321 <laughs> off Instagram, which current NBL player has the best chance to be on an NBA roster next season? We'll stay away from Andrew Bogut. We have discussed this before, but current NBL player, anyone a chance to play NBA next year in your guys' minds? You know who I really like? I like Nathan Sobey, man. Sobey's a gun. I like Sobey. I like Sobey because he plays defense. He'll pick you up full court. He's tough. He's athletic. He can handle the ball. He can shoot. He can pass. He can create. You know, he can do all of those things that tough guards, point guards can do. Now, for me, he plays better at the two. But his style of play, you can get combo guards that play point. Because in the NBA, all you're doing is bringing it up, kicking it, reverse, get it off an arm ball, and just go. He can play point guard in the oh, league. That's all you have to do. How come Liam and I never played? <laughs> <laughs> and last one before Brian we... Brian Bowen, get... though, is the one, right? He'll... Look, he's going to get drafted. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, going to get yeah. drafted. He'll play. Uh, and I actually thought he had a pretty good year. He did. In yeah. fact, was more impressive than Terrence Ferguson, yeah. who is now a starter for OKC. Mm. And lastly, Nahum Ziyech off uh, Instagram says, will we ever see NBL clubs part owned by NBA teams to help bolster the link between the leagues? Mm -hmm. That would be fun. Mm. I, I think Can't that... see it happening no. anytime nah, soon. man. But that'd be fun. Anything's possible! <laughs> what I like is the fact, even better, to mm -hmm. touch on... Bogut going back to the league, right? Mm -hmm. He actually played in this league, so now he's a legitimate advocate. He's just not mm -hmm. an Aussie from afar yeah. showing love to the league. Mm -hmm. He can actually talk more in depth mm -hmm. about the league, what's going on on the ground. So listen, it's a great story. Like Tory Craig does. Like Tory Craig. Mm -hmm. All right, are you going to Perth? I'm definitely going to Perth. I'm definitely going to see that train wreck happen. <laughs> I'm in the building. <laughs> we'll see you in Melbourne, Melbourne Sunday. Yeah. What happens this weekend? We've all suggested it'll be 3 1 Melbourne. Will it be 1 all after this weekend or? 1 all. I got 2 zip. Oh. Let's go. Wow. It's over in four. Did you not see what the board said? No, I've got it over in four as well. So Mel I. Melbourne will steal one of game one or game three, but I'm not sure which one. Yeah.
Hey, good luck in Perth. <laughs> On that note, enjoy Kobe as well. Very wonderful yeah, thing you did, it. even though Liam and I could have said nice things about you. Thank you, mate. <laughs> incredible <laughs> human being. On that note, we're out of here. NBA Live at Time. We'll see you next Tuesday. Enjoy Games 1 and 2 of the Grand Final Series.